Howdy, howdy, good people. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Coming live again by the grace of God, by the mercies of God. Uh, we are privileged to come on air once again to share the word of God. He is a good God. He is a merciful God, a gracious God who has brought us this far. Amen. So as we get started, let's pray. And I trust that we will be blessed as we hear the Lord today and, and allow him to minister to us. Hallelujah. Praise God. Let's pray. Father, we thank you. We love you. We worship you. You're such a good God and we trust you. We are grateful that you are on our side and not against us. We thank you that you're mighty and you're powerful and there is none that can compare to you. We hide ourselves under your shadow today. And we bless you for the victories that you win for us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen, dear beloved. It is such an honor and privilege to come on air again. Today we have our installment number seven in our series on deliverance. I do believe that this may be the last one we're doing in this series. And um, as we conclude, I am... Um, praying and trusting that God has done something for you and for the people in your life as we break free from the power of darkness to walk in all that God has for us. He is a God who gave his son to be our deliverer. And um, he, the Bible says that he came so that we can have abundant life. And so that is my desire for all of us to have the abundant life that Christ died so that we can have. He came to destroy the works of the enemy, scripture says, so that we can be freed from the hold of the enemy and enjoy the abundant life that he has for us. Amen. So let's dive right into it. Uh, I have our main text there, actually th the kind of uh, portions of, of the scriptures there. I Let me invite you, if you have not taken time recently to read Psalms 91, please do so. The entire chapter, it's only 16 verses, loaded with the benefits of those who trust in God when it comes to deliverance. This is a chapter about deliverance. And it goes through great detail to mention uh, some of the things that we may encounter from time to time that the enemy adversely throws in our path, but the Lord delivers us from them all. Amen. So as we conclude this uh, series, I want to direct our attention to that chapter and to spend some time there with the Holy Spirit. And let him work on us and help us stay safe. All right. So. The first verse, obviously, Psalms 91, verse 1, it says, He who dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. It sounds to me like this is a continuous thing that we need to be doing. To dwell means to live in or to, to abide in to be constantly under the cover of something. If you dwell somewhere, it means you live there. It means you spend your time there. And so there is this uh, message in the scripture, this word of God in the scripture, admonishing us to live in the secret place of the Most High. That means this is a place. This is a a location that you and I can be in at all times. It is not something we sleep in and out of. We can purpose to stay there. We can purpose to abide there. We can purpose to dwell there. And those that do, they are under the shadow of the Almighty. That means the Lord shields them and covers them. Amen. Amen. And who better to cover us and protect us than the Lord himself. He is the almighty. In other words, there is no might and no power above his. He's got it all. 
And if he's got it all, that means he can put down anything else that comes. Hallelujah. It means he can quench and overcome and overthrow any other power out there. He can neutralize any other power, any other authority out there. He is the Almighty. And so we are challenged by scripture to live in this place. And it, it, it calls it a secret place. Secret means it is not easily identifiable to everyone. It is for the few who make it a who take a diligent effort into finding it, right? And, and that's why the, the Bible, I, I believe it's in Proverbs, where it says, it is, the, is it the pleasure of a king to conceal a matter? And those who are wise look for it and find it? Hallelujah. It is that the secret place of the Lord is not evident to everyone. The secret place of the Lord is only to those who seek it. Remember that game you would play when you were younger? Hide and seek? You didn't hide in openness. You hid yourself in a secret place where the other person, the other friend, the other cousin, the other sister you were playing with could not easily find you. It, it, it means we need to go into this place within God that other forces cannot easily find us. It is a secret place in the Most High. It is not obvious to everyone. It is not easily identifiable to everyone. Hallelujah. Remember how he tells Moses, and I would have to find this verse later, but, but he, he says, he says, I will hide you in the cleft of the rock. There is this little crack, this little cleft in Jesus, the rock of ages, where you and I can hide, where you and I can take our safe retreat away from the wandering of the enemy, seeking whom he may devour. There is this place in God where you and I can take refuge and the enemy cannot easily spot us. It's not a place we need to just frequently in and out, frequent in and out. It is a place we need to pop us to stay. Hallelujah. Bless the name of the Lord. Abiding there in the shadow of the Almighty, in the cleft of the rock. And here's what the psalmist says in Psalms 32 and verse 7. He says, you are my hiding place. Hallelujah. You shall preserve me from trouble. You shall surround me with songs of deliverance. Here is a man, a woman who is telling the Lord that he has found this place in God where he can take shelter and hide. And right there in that place where this person hides, the Lord preserves him from all trouble. Bless the name of Jesus. There is a place in God that you and I can go to and be preserved from all trouble that's going on around us. That's why Jesus is on the boat with his disciples. They are crossing a tumultuous sea. Somehow, in spite of the storms, he is able to quiet himself actually and go to sleep. And the disciples get so frantic, they come to him and they run. Master, do you not care that we're about to perish? I'm telling you, it could be going, they say, to hell in a handbasket out here. And you could be completely at peace, asleep. You see, the things that are going on in the world do not need to bother us so much as we lose our peace over it. Sometimes my children will bring up an issue and I think to myself, in fact, just, even just today, you know, I was telling one of my children, you can thrive in any environment. It really doesn't matter. You have to begin with the right perspective. You have to begin with faith in God. You have to begin with a mindset that is a, 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 the mind of Christ, a mind of an overcomer. And you can thrive in any environment. I kid you not. That power is in Christ Jesus. You can rest peacefully and go to sleep in the middle of a storm. Praise the name of Jesus. There is a hiding place in Jesus where no trouble can find you. 
There is a hiding place in Jesus that you and I can go to and we will be surrounded with songs of deliverance. Songs of deliverance are not sad dirges. Songs of deliverance are not funeral songs of sadness. Songs of deliverance are not pain and traumatizing songs. You know, sometimes we have to get away from singing some of these pain, pain, painful songs because they, they re-trigger us. You know, they keep us in this place of, of, of continuously, perpetually being re-traumatized. See, that's why I don't like to sing about my problems. I don't. Praise the name of Jesus. One time, you know, I, 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 and this is how this actually happened. I was, you know, you go to YouTube, you can listen to any song. And, and, and I was listening to a particular song and the Spirit of God ministered to me. He says, notice how this person has been under so much pain that that has become their song. Almost every song this particular person sings is retelling and recounting the pain. Hmm? Some of the country songs have those, you know, a, a, a lover that left them, you know, they, they're drunk and fell on the side of the road. Those kind of songs, you know what I'm talking about? They re-traumatize you. We have to get away from that. Those kind of songs cause the pain over and over again. We have to get away from those kind of songs. If you're going to be delivered, if you're going to be set free, if you're going to be restored, if you're going to be in a place of victory in the Lord, you're going to have to get away from these things that re-traumatize you. There may be a time or, or, or every now and then maybe you're giving a testimony that you may have to tell somebody about that. But when you sing these songs that bring you to a place of pain over and over again, there is no redemption in that. There is no salvation in that. That's why I don't sing every quote-unquote gospel song out there. I'm very meticulous in picking the songs that I sing. And every single child of God ought to be careful about that point. That was a by the way. Nonetheless, there is a place in Jesus where we are surrounded with songs of deliverance, where we declare the power of our God. We declare and reaffirm the almighty saving hand of God. And there are songs that energize us. There are songs that catapult us into a place of victory. Hallelujah. Bless the name of Jesus. I'm going to move on right. And, and I've already mentioned, read the whole chapter of Psalms, but I'm going to skip through that or maybe I should just highlight a few things. You know, as you walk down or read down through that chapter, it talks about being delivered from the snare of the fowler. Every trap that the enemy lays in your path, you, path, you will be delivered from that. From the perilous pestilence, every sickness out there, the pandemic, we're literally coming out of that. Bless the name of Jesus. God can keep you and deliver you out of that. He will cover you with his wings, the scripture says. You can take refuge in him. He becomes your shield and your buckler. Hallelujah. So you won't be afraid even when you are faced with darkness all around you. Everything that happens in the day, the sun won't smite you by the day. Neither will the moon at night. Bless the name of Jesus. Indeed, a thousand may fall on your one side and ten thousand on the other side. We know how many people we lost in the pandemic. Everybody coming out of the pandemic better seeing this part of the Bible, telling how a thousand have fallen on our side and 10,000 on the other. But here we are preserved of God. It is not because we were any better. Trust me, I've seen young people die from this pandemic. I've seen older folks die. I've seen 97-year-olds fight this COVID off like nobody's joke. It's not about the person per se. It's the hand of God over these people. The hand of God of our lives. And then we'll move on. Because you have made the Lord your refuge and your, the most high your dwelling place. No evil shall befall you. Ah, uh, any plague will not come near your dwelling place. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He will give his angels charge over you. They will keep you in your ways. Even the, the devil used this verse to tempt Jesus. But he knew better how to apply the scripture. You don't put yourself, you, you don't take an, an unsafe action and then say, Lord, give your angels charge over me. I'm telling you, if you jump off a building, you're going to die. That's what the enemy was trying to tell Jesus to do. 
Oh, do not tempt the Lord in that. Don't put your hand over fire and say, I'm not going to be burnt. Of course you will. Of course you will. And it won't be because God has ceased being almighty. It'll just be because you and I have decided to be foolish. <laughs> anyway, in their hands, they will bear you. You will not dash your foot against a stone. You will tread on a lion and a cobra and, and the young lion and the serpent. This speaks of the powers of darkness. There are many times that, that when you are under the cover of the shadow of the Almighty, you may accidentally tramp over these things. You may inadvertently come, uh, uh, be confronted with these things, but the Lord keeps you in that. Verse 14 is where I'm going, 14 through 16. Because, and, and it says, because he, meaning that person who has set his love upon God, the Lord says, he will deliver that person. He says, I will set him on high because he has known my name. He shall call upon me and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him with long life. I will satisfy him and show him my salvation. You know, it is the salvation of God to be able to live a long life. There are too many odds against our lives. There are too many, many things that could have taken us out. But to be able to live a long life, a long fruitful life. Sometimes I look at my grandparents and I think, this woman is still, I mean, he's, she's 90 something and kicking hard. Nothing is going to slow you down. If your hope and your trust is in the Lord, he becomes your salvation. He becomes your song. And he rewards you and honors you with a long life, satisfying you. I've known people who lived long enough until they were satisfied with living. They actually prayed and said, God, now take me. Wouldn't you love to come to that place where you've checked off all the bucket things, bucket list items in your life, where you've seen your great, 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 great grandchildren, and you're satisfied with this life until you say, okay, now, Lord, I'm satisfied. God can grant you that. He can deliver you from all this adversity and all these uh, antagonizing issues so that you live a long, fulfilling life. Amen? So here's, here's what we need to do to get to that place. Uh, you know, we mentioned we need to dwell in the secret place of the Most High. That will help us abide under the shadow, under the cover, under the protection in those few verse, last verses of 91, he says, uh, 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 because he has set his love upon me. Let me ask you this. Where is your love set today? Where is your heart beating for today? What is it that, that causes your heart to like just thrillfully skip a bit? What have you set your love on? Is it Jesus or something else in this universe? If you set your love upon Jesus, if you can love him more than your mother, more, love him more than your children, love him more than your job, m love him more than anything you own. That's why he says that when we love him, we have to love him with all our heart all our soul, all our might, all our strength. It, it simply means living your life in complete alignment with the authority of Jesus Christ. Living your life in alignment with the power and authority of Jesus, allowing that power and that authority to flow through you. And then he says, because he has known my name. Do you know the name of Jesus? And then he says, he shall call upon me. So it's not enough to just know the name J-E-S-U-S, -S, to spell it, to say it in another language. It is not enough just to do that. But can you call on this name? The Bible says, call upon the name of the Lord and you shall be saved, you and your household. And trust me, I am calling on the name of the Lord for me and my household. 
I ask you to call upon the name of the Lord for you and your household. Here's why the name of Jesus is important. Scripture says in Philippians 2, 10 and 11, in Romans 14, 11, it says, Every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess to God. That, the, that, that at the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow in, in heaven and on earth and under the earth. And that every tongue shall confess that Jesus is Lord to the glory of God the Father. At the name of Jesus, it doesn't matter what power it is. It doesn't matter what entity it is. It doesn't matter if it's from this world or from the heavens. It doesn't matter even that it's from under the world. It has to bow. It has to surrender. Bowing means surrender. Bowing means reverence. Including the enemy Satan himself. He has to bow. He has to surrender. And he has to reverence the Lord God Almighty. So what is it that we face? Call upon the name of Jesus. At that name, everything shall bow, everything shall surrender, everything shall reverence him. Glory to God. Glory to God. Bless the name of Jesus. And he goes on to say, I'm, I'm winding up here, bless the name of the Lord, that the Lord will answer him, will be with him in trouble. Trouble may find you. Don't walk into it. Let it find you because it will find all of us from time to time. Jesus said, eh? in this world, you will have trouble. But be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. Every now and then we may encounter trouble. That's why we have to be careful. Not everybody that is facing trouble means they've necessarily done something wrong. Go ask Job. He encountered tremendous trouble. Not because he'd done anything wrong per se. So every now and then we may encounter trouble, but here's the word says, I will be with him. The Lord will be with us. Why? Because we are under the shadow of his wings. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. And here's what I'm going to say. Many times the enemy, you may encounter victory and the enemy will go away. But remember, it's for a season. I, I, I believe it's in Luke where scripture says that he, he left Jesus until an opportune, to return at an opportune time. And elsewhere it says sometimes that the enemy leaves and then he comes back and if he founds the house cleaned and, and, and not occupied by the Holy Spirit, I'll just put it that way, he goes and finds seven more wicked demons to come in. So when, when you clean your house, fill it with the Holy Spirit. Dwell in that secret place until every part of you is emanating the presence of God. That's what happened to Moses when he went up the mountain and was up there 40 days, 40 nights. And on the second town, to count 80 days, 80 nights. When he came back, everything about him was emanating the presence of God. Such that Israel, the nation at the time, could not even look at him. They said, cover your face. We cannot look at this because you are radiating the glory of the Most High God. Can you and I, Papa, to dwell in that secret place so that when we come out, even some things just repel, they just go away. They just hide themselves from us. Hallelujah. What dwelling in the secret place of the Most High does for us is it allows the Lord to be our constant companion and help. It allows the Lord to be our constant companion and help. Glory to God. When you are in him and he is in you and you are under his cover, no matter what you encounter, he's there to deliver you. He's there to save you. The psalmist says in Psalms 46 and verse 1, God is our refuge and strength, 
a very present help in time of trouble. Because listen to me, my sister and my brother, trouble may come from time to time. But if you are in the secret place of the Most High, if you are right there dwelling and abiding in the Lord, he will be your deliverance in the day of trouble. He will be your savior in the day of adversity. Deuteronomy 20 and verse 4 says, For the Lord your God is he who goes with you to fight for you against your enemies to save you. Woo, I love that verse. For the Lord your God is he who goes with you to fight for you against your enemies to save you. When he is your companion, it is he who fights against your enemies to save you. Let's pray. Father, we thank you. Oh, thank you for this great deliverance. Thank you for teaching us how to walk in deliverance every day of our lives. How to be freed from all captivity in every area of our lives. Lord, it's as simple as calling upon your name. And, and there are many practical ways in which we can do that. How I pray that Holy Spirit, you will remind us these things every day of our lives. That we may be delivered. That we may be set free. That we may walk in victory. Thank you, Lord, for being our constant companion and help. Fighting for us against our enemies to save us. Thank you, Lord God that you have overcome the world. Thank you that you are almighty. Thank you that at your name, every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess that you are Lord God. Go before us in every area of our lives, Jesus. And help us to walk in the life of deliverance. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, dear folks, God bless you and keep you.